Six plays, 81 yards in two minutes and 21 seconds. Morrow from 25 yards away. PAT was no good, and the B-Diggers are back in the game, Dave. Nine to six. I'll tell you what, they're out there scrapping and fighting, and that's just really neat to see. You know, a lot of people coming into this game with all the injuries, people are kind of hanging their heads and shrugging their shoulders thinking, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, these guys have shown a lot of character here tonight and and just basically saying we don't care who they are or who we're missing, we're going to play football. And and guys are stepping up out there and making plays. And Jacob Fetcher will kick it off from the 40-yard line. Looks like Austin Mall is one of those deep men there for Holy Family. And Fector boots that football high and very short, almost a pooch kick, fielded at the 18-yard line, running across the 25 to the 30. For Holy Family is Nick Welder before he's brought down over there by Ethan Brost, the sophomore at 5'10", 170. And that's where Holy Family takes over at their own 30-yard line with 7.26 to go. In the second quarter, and the Bee Diggers only trailing 9-6. to six. We've got a nice football game going on at this point. Now let's see if the Bee Diggers can make some defensive plays, get the ball back, and perhaps even take the lead. Going into the break, backs in an eye. The quarterback, Joe Summers, play action, rolling to his right. Here comes Weiser, setting up, throwing on the run. The pass is complete over the middle, breaking a tackle across the 40 to the 44 and a gain of 14 before Derek Lynch makes the tackle. Andrew Melcher makes the catch. Nice well run play by the Tigers. Yeah, he just ran up field about 10 yards and turned around and and the ball was right there and he caught it, gave up a couple of yards as he turned around and and then turned it upfield for for a few more, but Brush just didn't have any pressure on the quarterback that time. First and 10 for Holy Family at their own 44, two receivers to the left, the back split, and there's the gift to Gary running left and he's down after a gain of one. Dylan French grabbed him around the knees and then the ankles and brought Gary down to the ground. And that's what the B-Diggers need on defense. That was the mere opposite play that went for for uh, 94 yards just a few plays ago. And French did a good job of making a low tackle. But he's coming out of the game right now. It'll be second down and nine for Holy Family. They're at their own 45-yard line. Let's see, the B-Diggers can come up with two more. Excellent defensive plays. The back's in an eye. The ball is in motion to the right. Now resets. It was movement. No flag. There's a flag. Throwing on the run underneath. That pass is incomplete. Off the hands of Duncan Yost. But it appears that that was thrown before the play even took place. So it should be a dead ball and second down at around 14. Let's see if that's what the official's going to call. I'm telling you, after... After uh, the quarterback Summers threw the football, I really like to see Kyle Muir run in there and finish his rush and, and put Summers on his back because that's going to make him hurry up and throw the football a little bit more. Well, even better, Dave. It's illegal motion. And so it, that occurred during the play. I'm sure the B Diggers will decline this and make this a third and nine instead of a second and 14. And it is declined, so it'll be third and nine. From the 45, this is a big down for both teams. Holy Family can lose the momentum completely on this play. Well, they're hustling up to the line of scrimmage right now, and it'll be interesting if they decide to throw it or or stick with that running game that's kind of been picking us apart. Third and nine from the 45. Summers is back to throw. Pressure coming backside. Looks like there's a hold. He's going to take off with the football across the 50, running to his left, trying to get a block, and he's at the 46-yard line. Then he fumbles the football, and it looks like the beat diggers have got it. Looks like the Bee Diggers have got it, and they do. At around the 47, 48-yard line, as Shea Hansen comes up with a football, and the Bee Diggers now have forced Holy Family's first turnover with 6.08 to go. You know, Holy Family had one of their kids turn around, and he was getting ready to make a huge block, possibly spring in summers, open to run down the field. But uh, Brush had plenty of defenders that were still hustling out there, still running up there. Shea Hansen's one of them. They go up there, they make the big play. First and 10 for the Bee Diggers at the 48-yard line with 6.08 to go in the second. I mean, Dave, who saw this coming after the Bee Diggers got down 9 nothing? You knew they weren't going to quit. But now, all of a sudden, they're in a position to take the lead. 
With just over six minutes to go, first and ten. We're in the second quarter, and motion to the left is Melendez. Garcia, the quarterback, is going to pitch it at the last second to Tanner Mall, running right. He's inside the 50, down at the 49, before Austin Mall makes the first hit. It's a gain of three. Second down and seven. So far, those pitches from Garcia to to Mall, they're end over end, and they're just perfect. They're perfect um, pitches right out in front of Morrow. He's not having to reach one way or the other way to get it. And then Morrow's doing a good job of turning it upfield and running it. That time, the option was to the short side of the field, so he just didn't have a lot of room to, to turn it into anything. He had to get to the sideline and then turn it up, and by then he was out of space. It'll be second down and seven for the beat diggers at the 49-yard line of Holy Family, trailing 9-6, to 5.23 to go in the second. Garcia will send Melendez in motion to the left. The backs are split. And this handoff to Weiser running right. He bowls his way inside the 45 to around the 43-yard line right at the stick. Very close to a first down. He might be just a little bit short. It's a pickup of six before a couple of Holy Family defenders make the tackle. That was that play that made Jay, Greg Geno such a huge uh, success here in Brush where they fake the pitch and then hand the ball off. It's a fake 58-50. And... Uh, ended up what happened was is uh um weiser ran the football he got down there about seven yards and then the holy family defender almost ripped the football right out of his hands and i thought we were going to have another fumble on our on our case there. well that's what he tried to do that's that was part of the tackle was wrapping one arm around that football but weiser was too strong and secured that football with both arms and both hands and all 10 fingers and now they stretch out the sticks with 502 to go in the opening half of the beat diggers trailing nine to six Looks like it's going to be just short. That's probably even better at this point. You know what I'm really liking how Brush, you know, even though they're running over here to the short side of the field, it's kind of like what Fort Morgan did to us last week where we got the ball over here. We're running to the short side of the field, which is right in front of our home stands and our home bench, and it's like the Holy Family coaches and players over there. They can't see what's going on. For great family entertainment, check out Fire Lanes at 220 Cambridge and Brush. Walk in or reserve your time at Fire Lanes today. With the Bead Diggers looking at a third down and less than a yard to go at the Holy Family 43-yard line. Inside of five minutes to go in the opening half. And Garcia on third and inches will send Melendez in motion to the left. And the handoff, Weiser right up the gut. Very little, but that is enough for a Bead Digger first down. As the ball is going to be marked at around the 42-and-a-half-yard line. All he needed was a few inches. He got close to a yard. Yeah, he sure did, and he ran over the right side. It looked like it was a play that went right over the right guard of Brush. So a good job of blocking there for that offensive line. Just getting enough yards for the first down. First and ten for the Beat Diggers of the Holy Family, 42. And the Beat Diggers haven't had to call a timeout tonight, so they're managing the clock well. And you know that they want to take the entire second quarter into halftime. Not have to worry about that whatsoever. First and ten for Brush at the 42-yard line. The backs are split. Morrow and Weiser. Lynch is in motion to the left. And there is the give right up the middle to Weiser. And he's got a yard, maybe. And that's it. Weiser's running hard. But Colton Emich made the tackle for Holy Family. And will give him a yard at best. It's more like half a yard. Second down to nine as we approach the four-minute mark of the second. Those big hogs up there on the line for Holy Family, they're just controlling the line of scrimmage so much, and Brush is getting off the ball pretty quick. I watched the line of scrimmage that time, and when the ball was snapped, our kids were firing off, but boy, those big kids for Holy Family, they're awful quick coming out of their stance. 